If you're running an early stage startup, you'll know all about product market fit. It's one of the key ingredients for success. But how do you know when you have it? And what do you do after you find it? These are tough questions, especially for Web3 founders. In this video, we'll look at how to answer them. My name is Michael, and I'm a product marketing manager at Chainlink Labs. In this quick video, I'll be sharing four key steps that will help you identify product market fit and work out how to adapt after you found it. Let's dive in. Step one, understand the nature of your target market. Hopefully you've done some initial market research. Maybe you've talked to a few users or pitched your idea to an expert. First, you need to take a step back and look at where your product fits into the wider market. Does your project improve on an existing idea or are you creating a product that users don't yet know they want? Some experts call these blue ocean and red ocean strategies. A blue ocean is a new market waiting to be tapped. For example, some analysts believe that real estate NFTs present an untapped market in Web3. Although projects in this category do exist, the overall market is still small. The hope is that at least one project will eventually gain enough traction to unlock the market's true potential. A red ocean is a market that is already established and not likely to see another surge of hyper growth. Some say that collectible NFT artwork falls in this category. Any new NFT collection probably has to win market share away from an existing project. In the short term, it is harder to find new demand for these kinds of projects. These strategies will affect how you evaluate market share, a key metric for tracking success and product market fit. Step two, define key metrics for product market fit. Market share is just one of the many metrics that can signal product market fit. And it might not be relevant if you're in blue ocean market, but ultimately you'll need to select metrics that fit the goals of your project. For example, Suppose you're building a tool or protocol for Web3 developers and hope to make money from usage fees. In this case, integrations and code contributions will provide a clearer signal of product market fit. In other words, the best metric will heavily depend on the type of product that you're building. If your product is powered by a strong branding and community loyalty, then track community engagement. If your project relies on attracting liquidity, then track total volume locked. If your project relies on player activity in your game, then track active users and user retention. Hopefully you get the picture. Once you've decided on a metric, make sure that you have a reliable way to track it. If you don't, consider updating your product to facilitate better tracking. Step three, continuously reassess product market fit. Some founders view product market fit as the final destination and that success is guaranteed once they reach it. However, in Web3, finding product market fit is more like finding the end of a rainbow. You think you're almost there, then the weather changes and you lose sight of it again. This is why you need to regularly check your assumptions about product market fit and track where you are in comparison to the overall market. Just because you've lost users doesn't mean you've lost product market fit. Maybe there's a sudden change in the market and you lost far fewer users than everyone else. On the flip side, your user numbers might look just as healthy as last month, but your market share might have been diluted. This can happen if newer projects did a better job at capturing a sudden surge in market interest. Step four, define a post product market fit strategy. After you've repeatedly lost and found product market fit, your product will begin to stabilize. Most projects don't make it to this stage, but it's still important that you have a plan if you're getting close. Stabilizing means that you don't have to keep changing and fixing things at such high speed. You shouldn't maintain the cadence that you needed to reach product market fit. You'll need those resources to focus on the next phase of your project. The unique thing about Web3 is that many projects go through a phase of decentralization. They start off centralized because decisions need to be made quickly and there's less at stake. Once they've built up a network, they need to slow down development, make sure that changes are thoroughly reviewed by the community. And that's why it's important to plan for what happens after product market fit. You need to know when it's time to slow down and focus on new initiatives, even if you're not planning to decentralize. For example, these initiatives could be 
new community building activities such as events and educational webinars or new products or add-ons that complement your core product. It's important to plan ahead here because once you decentralize your change focus, it's hard to go back. But if you do get to this stage, congratulations, you've made it further than most. Okay, that's it for now. We hope this video gave you some new ideas. Every project is different, so it's hard to give advice that applies universally, but hopefully this four-step guide helps you to get to the right methods and metrics for tracking product market fit. Good luck, everyone.